the much awaited top leadership committee of China has been announced. Xi Jinping has secured a historic third term as the general secretary of the party, and he is all set to head the military commission again. This makes him the nation's most powerful leader since Mao Zedong. Now, Li Qiang has been named as the new premier of the Chinese Communist Party. Many analysts had predicted him to take this position. The 63-year-old was in charge of Shanghai when it went into its two-month lockdown. He is a longtime loyalist to Xi and has even worked as the chief of staff to the president. On your screens are the rest of the five members. Experts say she has elevated his loyalists and ousted liberals from the key committee. To no one's surprise, not a single woman has been elected in a top position. After announcing his new team, she addressed the media and laid out a roadmap for the future. The onus has been put on the young and hardworking. She thanked the party for their trust and for achieving a quote-unquote moderately prosperous society. Coming to the global front, she offered an important clue about China's future direction. There has been growing fear that the country is closing off from the world economy, but she says the world needs Beijing. Just as China cannot develop in isolation from the world, the world needs China for its development. Through over 40 years of relentless reform and opening up, we have created the twin miracles of fast economic growth and long-term social stability. The Chinese economy has great resilience, potential, and latitude. Its strong fundamentals will not change, and it will remain on a positive trajectory over the long run. China will open its door ever wider. We will be steadfast in deepening reform and opening up across the board and in pursuing high-quality development. A prosperous China will create many more opportunities for the world. In the presidency, uh, make it quite plain um, that China is now facing unprecedented uh, challenges as well as opportunities not seen in a hundred years. So there are various uh, traps he has uh, um, uh, mentioned in the past, uh, the so-called Taxitus trap. Um, if outsiders, countries, the rest of the world don't believe in the Communist Party, then no matter how well the Communist Party does, it's subject to a lot of blowback. And of course, you have heard about the to citizens trap, um, the rivalry between great power, the middle income trap, uh, where a lot of developing countries are, are being entrapped. Um, and also, um, according to Joseph Nye, um, the uni uh, Harvard University professor, uh, the Kindleberger uh, trap, even though uh, you emerge to be top of the world, and then it's a capacity to keep the world order. And that applies to the United States uh, recently as well. Um, and of course, some, some people were accusing um, a presidency uh, of suffering from the dictator uh, trap, as he peace dictates everything, uh, without realizing that the Communist Party, what you see is only the top level. You know, decisions are made just, just at the drop of a hat. Um, it, it is it's the outcome of, of perhaps years and months and, and, um, and weeks and, uh, of input from experts and public hearings, uh, all thrash out. Uh, from the various levels involving um, a different, um, even different political affiliations, uh, the civil society sometimes, um, before it comes to the top. Of course there is a disagreement, of course there is even a discussion uh, in, in the various groups a presidency leads, but the end, at the end of the day, he's the man to make the final decision. China is a country of 1.4 billion people. The population is almost equally split between male and female, which means the country is home to over 700 million women. But when you look at its government, it is hard to agree. This visual from Beijing making the headlines today, seven men taking center stage. These are the people who will have the final say in China about everything from COVID to the economy to foreign policy. But where are the women? 
Let's find out. Now, this is the newly formed governing team of China. It is split into three broad committees and hierarchy is extremely important here. Let's look at the bottommost layer, the Central Committee. It has 205 permanent members, out of which just 11 are women. And as you go higher up the ladder, the future looks even more bleak for women. For the first time in 25 years, there are no full women members in the Politburo. For the last five years, San Chan Lan was the only woman sitting in the committee and she was the highest a woman has ever risen in Chinese politics. But with her retirement, there is uh, the little hope for gender parity went out the window. It's not like there were no contenders. Two women were fighting for the spot, but both were refused. Only eight women have made it onto the top uh, Politburo since 1949, and three of them were wives of top officials. Let's move on to the top governing body, the Politburo Standing Committee. To no one's surprise, not a single woman has been elected. Is it is a group of seven members that practically run the country, but no woman has ever been a member of this team. It's been 100 years since the Chinese Communist Party was formed. Leaders have come and gone, but not the women of the CPC. In 1921, Shanghai, the party held their uh, first meeting on a houseboat. No women were present that day. A century later, there are 8.8% of women making political decisions in China. It is clear a glass ceiling still exists and it prevents women from rising in the ranks and bringing change. Enormity of the task is what makes it great and infinitely glorious. As China cannot develop in isolation from the world, the world needs China for its development. Through over 40 years of relentless reform and opening up, we have created we are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.